Uh, but here we are. And actually, the reason um, I should start by saying that Deb asked me if I needed to do a trigger warning this morning because, you know, stuff. I, I don't think I'm going to say anything that's going to require a warning, but, you know, if, if, if I do, um, I apologize in advance. Yes. Um, the theme of fertility this morning comes to us because a few months ago, Amy said, oh, we should do a service on fertility sometime. <laughs> well, that's why we're doing this. So last week I asked her, so Amy, why did you choose that? What did you want me to say? And she didn't remember. So here I am with fertility. It's all you. It's all me. So yeah, I can't blame her for any of this except the theme. Um, so we want to, let's just start with the story. I thought that was a good place to start, start with the story. So the story starts with Hannah. Right, and we, we talked about this a few weeks ago that Hannah didn't have any children. This, um, and but it wasn't really her infertility that made Hannah sad. That wasn't why she was sad. She was sad because Penina, her fellow wife, was hassling her about it, teasing her, and causing her distress. We don't know otherwise if Hannah wanted children. We know that Hannah wanted to stop getting hassled by Penina, and Elkanah, her husband seemed to be fine with the way things were, so he didn't want more kids. Um, but, right, and, and so th this tells us that that, that fertility is, is, a, is sort of complex, right? I mean, not news to anybody here, right? But on the one hand, you think, well, you know, like a woman has, has children, and this brings out, like, this incredible feeling of, of love, and it brings out this feeling of joy and peace and all of these wonderful emotions that, that come with bearing children, right? But it also brings out mama bear. Right? Have any of you experienced, right, what it feels like to right, either be or be the recipient of mama bear, right? That there's this fiercely protective part to fertility. And I mean, there's other mama bear stories actually in the Bible, right? So um, um, Sarah, Right, Sarah and Abraham, and, and Sarah's all fine with this with this other woman giving birth, you know, until she has her own, and suddenly she, you know, has to kick Hagar out of the, you know, out of the whole house, out of the whole community, just because she's got this mama bear thing going on. Growing up, um, I had a friend whose family were dairy farmers, and so he was out there, you know, he'd been uh, well, just like a kid, and he would he would been out there trying to help out in the pasture. Um, and one day, as he was working in the pasture, he just accidentally walked between a cow and her calf. <laughs> um, and a number of days later, he showed up at school with like 15 stitches in his head because the cow was not putting up with any of this, right? It's not just bears and people. So it, it's so important to realize that this isn't a question of like either you're fertile or you aren't. Either you've given like as if somehow that's right. So so much of the discussion these days right now is like on the whole abortion debate seems to be about like either you know you pop out a baby or you don't and that's kind of like the whole discussion on first of all I, I realized that I just got into a lot of trouble using the phrase pop out a baby because yes. that's <laughs> probably not the way women experience it. You know it works for us guys as a phrase but you know, you gotta be careful here but right but but it's not just a matter of like have you you know can you give birth or can't you give birth or suddenly the you know this solves all the problems. That, that this that fertility is a whole right, 20, 30, 40, 50 year commitment to nurture, to bring up, and to put up with right, these kids who just get older. Because when children are born, right, we, we have, right, most people at least, they have all of these plans. Right? Maybe their plans didn't include the child, and maybe they do. Right? But right for the for, for couples or for, for women who want this child, right? There's all of these things. Well, I want this child to be, and I want this child to do. I want all, and there's this sort of this whole plan. You know, that by the time the kid reaches like you know zero, right? Their whole life has been planned for them, and then and then reality happens, right? And the child is born with physical disabilities or social disabilities or emotional disabilities, or maybe they're like the only perfect specimen of human beings on this earth, you know, except for Corey, but, but otherwise, 
Right. Otherwise, we're just we just come out, you know, a little bit lumpy and, and weird to begin with, and then and then these poor kids get stuck with parents like us, right? And so, however perfect they started out, you know, they get they they get us, and it all gets really complicated really quickly. And Hannah knew this, right? Hannah, so Hannah had dedicated this child to God. But and but she wasn't willing to do it like right away because those first few years are really important, and so she keeps Samuel with her for those first few years of, of, of nurturing, of care, of teaching, of making sure he understands what his mother's love feels like, even though he's not even going to remember that on an ongoing way. His his self, so much of the child's self, gets developed. Or there too, long before they know what's happened. So she comes, right, when she's finally ready to, to, to give him up to God, she comes, but she doesn't just sort of show up and drop him off, right? She shows up with her whole family and with like a three year old bull and a bushel of flour and a whole bunch of oil because they're going to have a big celebration, right? Because she understands the tie between her own fertility and the fertility of the land around her. This is all part of the same packet, not like human beings exist in a little bubble and, and oh, by the way, there's nature somewhere. It's like, no, the human beings exist, right, because there is nature somewhere. And so she's going to make a big deal of this, right? So, so I don't know how big, right, uh, bulls were back in Israel, but, right, they're pretty big animals, right? So in the days before refrigeration, how many people do you need to eat a bull? <laughs> right? You've got, what, two days, three days to eat all that meat, and then the rest of it you got to throw away. So it's going to have been a big party. What, you need the bushel of flour, too, you can't just eat. Right? So she understands her offering as a tie to the land. And this is this is so important right, in the modern discussion of fertility because that's the thing that gets missed that's often missing. Right? We had this discussion, as I mentioned, about abortion going on, but so often the tie is not made to, oh, and by the way, when this child is born, maybe it'd be nice if they had like drinkable water, right? And access to, to good food. And maybe it'd be nice if we stop you know, poisoning the earth and, and doing all of the all of the stuff we're doing to it, but the, the debate, current debate over fertility is just, it's just much too narrow. So Hannah then leaves Samuel at the fabric. It's so hard to imagine. I, I mean, those of us who have children, it's this idea of like, well, I'm going to drop my kids off with this big stranger and walk away. But Maybe, and you know, maybe you know, for some people, maybe this was like, like this sounds like a really good plan. <laughs> I, I, I cannot, because right, because we're complex people, all of us, right? And and parenting is complex, and maybe you know, maybe and I'm sure most parents at some point have had days like that, where you know, if you give them the opportunity of well, you can just drop your kid off at the babysitters and drive away. I'm guessing every parent's had at least a few days like that. Or when I was in Ghana, there was a there was a young couple in the church um, who had been married, you know, who got married, and they weren't expecting to be able to have children. That they were pretty sure that this was not going to be in their future for sort of biological reasons. That they, I mean, they had discussed the detail with me, but but they, they shared this with me that they they weren't expecting to have kids, and then suddenly she got pregnant, and 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 had a healthy baby, and this man, you know, who was not expecting to have have children, he he almost glowed in the dark. He was so happy, you know. Like I, it's just hard to imagine anybody like physically being happier than he was. And then, and then they had another one, and then they had another one, and like they just, and, and they loved their children more than, well, you know, more than that even. And and then, so this last time when I went back to Ghana, I found out that his eldest child was living at the pastor's house. He wasn't at home. I 
uh, can you make sense of this? And he said, well, this is just, this is just a better place for her right now. And I, 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 I tried to imagine, you know, I was like, like, would I love my children that much that I'd be willing to do that? Drop them off somewhere where they had a better chance than they would at home. In fact, you know, so I, I, I pushed them a little bit. I said, so like, what about if I, if I wanted to take your daughter with me to America? I go, oh, yeah. You have much better opportunities there. You should do that. And I had to back away quickly because, A, it's not legal. <laughs> and B, I don't want them, you know. I'm great little kids, but thank you know, that, that, that's done already. So, right? But just this, you know, again, this notion of this long-term Really, really deep responsibility that that the discussion of fertility is just a long term discussion, not a, not a nine month one. And it's especially important at a time when our focus on human fertility means that the world is getting a little overcrowded already in human beings. There's already too much of us, too many of us who are already out of balance. And part of the reason, I think, is because we are too far from fertility cycle. We are too far from the basic fertility of life around us, right? We, we, have, we, we get food, but we think that right, grapes come from the store, right? And, and all of the food we get, well, it's just at Kroger's. Right? We forget that it comes out of the dirt. And we forget about the complexity of just dirt. Complexity of good fertile soil and what that all means, the number of bugs it takes to maintain fertile soil, and all, all of the complexity of all that we, we, we've lost. Well, maybe that's a place to begin. Just as you're eating this next food, right, for the next 40 years, try to be mindful of your food. Try, try to remember where it came from and how it got people, soil, and all of the things that, that make it possible for us to eat. And, and being mindful of your food doesn't mean that you have to go to like Whole Foods and buy $5 apples or buy like ancient grains, organic vegan crackers. Like even, like even Wonder Bread starts out as grain. Even Wonder Bread comes from the soil. So, so that is my message today. I could just take the time to think about the fertility of the world around you and to appreciate the God who has brought this home. Amen. Our last number 77.